Welcome back to True Geordie Extra Channel, the home of all me combat sports videos. Big fight on the weekend. Canelo Alvarez, Billy Joe Saunders. Let's see what happened. It's hard to score around with Canelo. He was allowing Billy Joe to pepper him a little bit, but then one body shot from Canelo looks like it counts for five of Billy Joe Saunders punches. You see those body shots, man. I fucking love them. Honestly, that's a body shot. I haven't looked at the score sheet to who had more punches in round one. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter now. We all know how it ended but Canelo to me was landing the better shots in round one Billy Joe had a really good round two there he even back Canelo up a little bit this was the game plan get behind the jab mix it up win his respect that was the important thing and at times it felt like he was and then <sighs> Canelo just bites down on the gum shield and starts walking you down again and <sighs> it's, he's a fucking nightmare for anyone you can see early on here in the first three rounds with those body shots Canelo's playing the long game he knows he's not gonna just walk through Saunders He's got to be strategic about this. And even if it looks at times like he's given up ground or Billy Joe's getting the jab off, he's patient. And I think that's one of his best qualities as a fighter is his patience. He knows it'll come and he's just got to put the money in the bank account. The head movement of Canelo there. Miss, miss, miss. So good. I feel like the fourth round is where Billy Joe started coming into it a bit more, started gaining in confidence here. Canelo's smart. See the way he's making Billy back up constantly. He he knows he's got the power advantage. So he just walks him down and makes Billy work. He, he's moving around the outside. His legs are going constantly to try and keep him out the power shots. You know, Canelo's patient. He just knows I've just got to keep closing him down. Eventually the opportunity will come because he's going to get tired. Billy Joe has not lived the life of a fighter the way some do you know like don't get me wrong he was in shape for this fight but I wouldn't say his cardio is amazing and I think that's probably why Canelo called it he said eight nine ten rounds I think it was uh, by then he knew that's when Billy Joel will be slowing down because I'm gonna put that pressure on him and just drain the gas tank smash him to the belly and eventually the headshot will come even against a slick fighter like Billy Joe this is beautiful Beautiful. Billy Joe in this fifth round is showing he is elite in terms of as a technical boxer. The way he's moving, the way he's catching Canelo. Like you have to be as good as they come in order to land like this on Canelo. He's, he looks fantastic, yeah. The problem is, is everything else in his game. Like Canelo is just, he's got this inner belief and the way he just walks you down and it's like he doesn't feel anything you do to him. That drains the confidence from the other guy. He knows he hits harder. He knows he's also technically good. He's got this will power is it, it just can't be broken as good as billy joe is technically i just feel like you're, you're battling the total package in canelo in round six it felt like maybe the tide could be turning a little bit like billy joe looked more confident he had a great round five you know if this was in a uk venue the crowd would have been going wild yeah P people would have started to believe a bit more after a bit of a, a good start from canelo like oh is, is he coming into it now and yes he was coming into it a bit and yes he was looking good and you can't take anything away from him but in reality also I think Canelo was setting him up but Canelo was also going I'm gonna let him get some shots off because I've got a much better chance of cracking him in the head when he isn't defending because he is such a decent defensive fighter so does when he's committing that's when I'm gonna catch him so I think there was a bit of both going on there, there were, Canelo was waiting like the fucking Venus flytrap and Billy Joe was getting into the fight a bit you just can't you just can't take that you can't take that he's breaking him down at the foundations there Canelo. See that tendency Billy has to dip the head down. Canelo made a mental note of that. All right, then. I'll, next time you do that, I've got a train coming to the station. That That's it. That was the shot. That was the shot where you could see Billy doesn't do his usual laugh it off. He was genuinely fucking hurt there. The way he timed Billy Joe there. He must have known as well because Canelo starts celebrating immediately. He knows that he's hit enough people to know when he's fucking hurt someone. Yeah, that eye's fucked. Eddie Hearn said it, even at ringside he could tell that the bloody eye had been caved in off one shot. So that's how the cookie crumbles. Canelo, patient, them killer body shots, walk them down, tired them out, used his power, and ultimately if Billy Joe had power that could rival Canelo, this might have been a different fight, but he fucking doesn't. You know, th there's a lot of talk should he have carried on? How bad was it? He had a broken orbital bone. In 30 years from now, Billy Joe may re regret it. He might think, you know what it is, I wish I just got off my stool, went out there and tried to knock him out for one round, just threw on everything at him. And if they stopped the fight, fuck it, at least I went out on my shield. He may regret it. 
But I have no problem with the coaches stopping it because, look, let's be honest, you're fighting the pound for pound king. You need everything to go right in order to beat Canelo. Once your orbital bone's fucked and you're not even able to say him properly, he, you're not beating Canelo like that. You know what I mean? It ain't, it's just not going to happen. So personally, I don't have a problem with it. The problem comes for a lot of people with some of the things Billy Joe said in the past. So yeah, when uh, Daniel Dubois took a knee after getting his eye jabbed in by Joe Joyce, Billy Joe had a few things to say. If my two eye sockets were broken, my jaw was broken, my teeth were out, my nose was smashed, my brain was beaten, I was not stopping until I was knocked out or worse. I don't agree with a man taking the knee and letting the ref count him out. I've got no problem with Billy Joe stopping. You know, I've got no idea how bad a broken orbital bone feels, but I'm, I'm pr I mean, I've broke bones before, so I, it probably horrible. The idea of getting repeatedly punched in that part of your body afterwards n can't be good. I got no problem with it, but those quotes, they've aged worse than uh, Katie Hopkins, if I'm honest. It ain't good. It, 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 it's bad. Um, but he can hold his head up high. He went in there with one of the greats and he held his own for a fair amount of time. The overall quality the athleticism, the heart, the determination, the, the the grit that Canelo has. He's got it all, man. And that's the problem. I watched Teddy Atlas and he said before the fight, Canelo does everything Billy Joe does but better. And to a degree, that's pretty spot on. You know what I mean? Like, I think Billy Joe showed he, he can be slick and he can make you miss and, you know, he has his qualities as well. But he's just too much. I don't see anyone beating him. It's a shame because he's one of the greatest of all time and a lot of people should want to watch him. But, you know, he's he's Mexican. He doesn't really speak English much and he just hasn't connected with the world. You know, he's clearly got a market in America at certain places in America, but especially Mexico. And um, that's it. The rest the world I, I don't think really that fussed on him you know and, and it's a shame because we're watching greatness here we really are one thing I did find interesting about this fight is Tyson Fury's pre-match comments on how seriously Billy Joe Saunders was taking the fight he was up at four in the morning having a Bud Light it was crazy what he's taking this fight with ease um, just a boxing match you know you can't take it too serious it's not life and death is it we're not going to death row fucking boxing match just to be clear just a boxing match you know not life and death Billy Joe not taking it too seriously um, he does actually say a little bit more on this Tyson in about a minute's time in the same interview and I spoke to Billy Joe a couple of weeks ago as well we were running actually around Red Rock in Vegas and he said to me he said look I would rather die 10 minutes after winning this fight than lose it so it means that much to him it's not just a boxing match to Billy Joe it's his life it's his legacy I'm not sure if Billy Joe was taking it too seriously or not seriously enough now. This was a fucking good fight, wasn't it? Jesus Christ. Did you see this? Katie Taylor versus um, Tasha Jonas. This is the best female boxing match I've ever watched. Look at that, man. This is fucking unbelievable, this shit. Honestly, this, this was amazing. I, I was watching this for the Derek Chisora fight. I like Chisora, don't get me wrong. But, you know, this fight stole the fucking show. It was unbelievable. Look at that, man. Jesus Christ, the heart these two showed, man. It, it, honestly, like anyone who still believes women should not be allowed in the boxing ring, you need to shut the fuck up and watch this fight. It was amazing. Like Katie Taylor is the superstar, like uh, she's world renowned. You know what I mean? A lot of people know her. Although when I seen how much these two got paid for the fight, I was kind of shocked because it wasn't what they deserved. Uh, I don't know if female boxing is still a bit behind in that regard, but I know some of the female MMA fighters are getting paid shitloads. Katie the pressure, the flurries, whereas Tasha, she seemed to be the one more of a, the boxer, the one who was picking her shots a little better, but Katie has this chin and this heart and just keeps coming forward. It, it's something to behold like, oh, oh, oh. That was when you knew she was, she was in the fight. That combination from Natasha here, where you can see she hurts Katie. Katie's pouring it on. She will just overwhelm anyone, in my opinion, unless you give her something to worry about. And then Tasha catches her here, and it was just fucking superb. She caught her coming in. She got too greedy. This is round seven, and I, and at this point, I'm thinking Tasha's coming on strong. She's landing the cleaner shot. She looks like she's hurting Katie more than Katie's hurting her. Ooh, that body shot. You can see the look on Katie's face here when she takes this. One thing I noticed Katie's really good at doing is scoring points as well like she's a smart fighter you could argue natasha might have landed some of the cleaner shots throughout the fight but 
towards the end when you're getting tired katie has this depth to her where she can just dig deep and pull it out when it matters and you see these flurries here get her in the corner boom 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 they're bouncing off the gloves but they're scoring the judges are paying attention to that she took her cardio to another level and it just felt like natasha couldn't go with her she couldn't maintain that championship pace and i mean that's why katie is who she is you know what i mean she took her to the deepest waters possible but to be fair natasha showed enough like in skill she's a problem she just didn't have that next level that katie had at that time but if she can find that for a rematch fucking pay good money to watch that fucking scrapping jesus i've seen this before and <laughs> this is just like i'm watching it again fuck me man i can't believe people still don't think women should fight man this is this is just unbelievable eddie sat down with tyson but the gypsy king is indestructible never ever had problems never had mental health struggles never had anything tyson fury is a flawed character and the only man who can beat the Gypsy King is Tyson Fury. Or AJ, maybe. AJ, uh, no? AJ couldn't lace my boots. That's a good line, isn't it? Uh, you're, you're literally talking to his promoter. The difference in me and him is there's only one difference, right? He's a great champion, two-time champion and all that. He's knocked out loads of people and whatever. But the real difference here in men is he's a businessman and I'm a fucking Spartan. I don't care about money. I don't care about fame. I don't care about glory, belts, undisputed, being remembered. I care about knocking motherfuckers out. I'm a Spartan. I live to fight. I like the way Tyson talks. I think there's some half-truths in there. Like, when you think about them as, as people, they are so different. Like, AJ has got brand deals fucking for every single thing they can stick on him. And good for him. I'm, I'm the same. I want all the brand deals, all right? But <laughs> Tyson is different. He's never given a fuck about public image and all of that in terms of selling stuff. The only thing he's ever sold is books, to my knowledge. You know, I, th I think a lot of that is to try and help people, to be fair to him. He he may have a point there. The question is, why the fuck are we still waiting for this fucking fight to be signed? Come on, Eddie, for fuck's sake. I'm ready. Switching over to MMA now, Mike Bisping tweeted out something interesting the other day about Dylan Dennis. You might remember him as a training partner of Conor McGregor, online troll, and a man who most people kind of know him because Jake Paul talks about him now. You know, obviously, he's got a world-class Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu game, but in MMA, I think he's had like one fight in Bellator like he isn't known for fighting he's more known as just an online personality um, Bisping seemed to have a bit of a beef with him after Dylan Dennis tweeted out should me and Bisping do an Instagram live I think they may have been a little back and forth Bisping actually cleared this up and said there is no beef at Dylan Dennis I've never even met you nor have I even laid eyes on you you don't fight you're just an online troll who's as insignificant as a bothersome fly on a warm summer's day oh my honestly bisping's got away with words i fucking love that it is really time that dylan dennis either you know get in the ring with a jake paul or or just fight someone because as a pro fighter as he is you can't continue mouthing off if you're not actually backing it up in any way it, be it becomes sort of just like yeah whatever you know, no one pays attention anymore. Uh, apparently, he's now fully fit and ready to fight Jake Paul. Bang it on the uh, Mayweather undercard. Second fight from the top. I'll, I'll watch that shit. No problem. Uh, the UFC happened on the weekend. Donald Cerrone was supposed to be fighting Diego Sanchez. We'll talk about why that didn't happen in a second. But Sanchez was pulled, as I'm sure some of you know. Cerrone, oh, it's just awkward. What What is Cerrone throwing there? It's not, was that a feint? Donald is, is so ward out. You know what I mean? Like, he's had too many wars. He can barely throw a feint now. It's fucking... <sighs> It's sad that, you know, you, you don't want to say it. Donald has been a great servant to the UFC. He's he's always brought the fight. He's always gone out on his shield and tried to, to get the win. But he's done. He's been done for ages. And the UFC have got a duty of care to him to stop him from fighting now. It, 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 it's over. It's been over. And the saddest thing is old man Cerrone is Conor McGregor's only win in the last five fucking years. Like, McGregor posted this the other day. I'm like, you're bragging about that? me it's your only win in five years as a guy who's been fucking done for fucking ages this blows my head people still rant and rave about mcgregor is that you know mcgregor still talks about himself as, as if he's this guy i'm like you've had 
one win in five years against the guy who's been fucking done for ages. You know, I could give two shits about your fucking Rolexes and cars, pal. One fucking win for a fighter who's supposed to be one of the like best fighters in the world, according to himself. And his only win in five years is against that guy who hasn't beaten Donald Cerrone, man. Fucking hell. So Diego Sanchez is going through a fucking terrible time. It's 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 just that, another one, in the words of fucking DJ Khaled. Another one. I've just found this video, right? So this is what this is about, right? Diego Sanchez has got a really weird guy who's coaching him and doing everything else for him if you listen to him for more than five seconds. <laughs> this video, the music they've put on this video is fucking hilarious. <laughs> There's no way this isn't sexual for at least one of them. <laughs> I love that. This supposed guru or whatever the fuck he is is literally punching Diego Sanchez in the head. It's fucking nonsense, isn't it? It's absolutely nonsense. And the sad thing is, is that, you know, Diego Sanchez is viewed by a lot of people in the community as a good dude. For example, th this this tweet, oh, no, that's not the tweet. I don't know what the fuck that, that's a joke about what they were doing before. Um, Diego's actually a good guy. A lot of people have seen him do a lot of nice things in the past and speak very highly of him. For example, this night, he uh, made a fight out with Down Syndrome's dreams come true when he stepped into the octagon with him in 2017. Sanchez lost uh, in the first round via armbar and then paraded the guy around with him. And things like that, you, you know, you like to say stuff like that where the fighters give back. But this is just to a, a, a weird, weird place now. A lot of the MMA community are speaking out against this guru. There was this interview which was really sort of disturbing. This is um, Diego Sanchez now talking about trying to get a meeting with Dana White. When I've bled, I've sweat, I've fucking cried. I've fucking cried for this fucking company. I've fucking sacrificed more than you will ever know. And you can't fucking have a 45 minutes to meet with it. Oh, but you'll meet with Clay Guida. You'll meet with Clay Guida and you'll post that shit up. If you're Dana White, it, you, what do you do with that? You know, on the one hand, you feel bad because the guy clearly has given a lot for the the UFC. And he's one of the reasons why. Look, he may not be Conor McGregor. He may not be the biggest pay-per-view star ever. Like, I remember him fighting BJ Penn way back. Like, he has contributed a lot of the company. But he, the guy's clearly in a bad way. And when someone is in that way and they're vulnerable and they've got someone around them, like this guru, they can be manipulated. And it feels like this could be the case. I'm not saying I'm right. I might be wrong. This Joshua Faber lad's got a lot to say for himself. Cerrone knows someone who kicked his ass. Uh, I do know the guy that whipped his ass at the bar. I used to train with the guy. That kid was talking about his death punch and how he was going to kill the dude. And my dog, my buddy dog walked his motherfucking ass all over the bar. So uh, the death punch did not work. It was unsuccessful. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that. So Joshua Fabia claims to know something known as the death punch. I, I just want to do some research on this because, you know, I might need to learn this. You know what I mean? In case Lawrence ever steps to me. <laughs> they look like a couple there. For real, though. They... <laughs> they genuinely look like a couple. So apparently this guy here likes to chase people around in an octagon with a knife to encourage them to move faster. It suddenly tells me there's easier ways of doing that. Get them to chase the chicken like Rocky did, something like that. So now it doesn't look like I have anything, but I'm kind of pulling on his throat. And now, because he can still resist this, he's still able to move, I'm going to shorten the movement by grabbing his balls. So now it's done. Do you understand? It's done. Because I have his balls in his throat. Okay, pretty simple. Balls and throat. <laughs> Balls and throat. This is nuts, isn't it? Like, My name is Joshua E. Fabia. I'm the founder of School of Self, a transformation. He's bad news, this guy. How's Diego Sanchez, a man who actually knows martial arts, who, who really can fuck people up, been taken in by this? When you're at rock bottom, which Diego probably was, that's when you're at your most vulnerable, and that's when people can worm their way in and gain control. I think that's enough for this week's fight and talk, obviously. I need a name for this show, really, because we're, do we're doing it regular now, I'm, 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 and I'm getting into it. Obviously, we've got the knockout. You know, that's what we do, the live show. Is this... Can we use that the knockout news is that, or is that get us suggestions into what I should call this and you know I know a lot of you probably want to call it fat bastard talks about fighting when he isn't a fighter but if you could refrain because that I've suggested that and it's a no don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already to the True Geordie Extra channel hit the like button thanks for watching and I'll see you later